All I can say is wow, look at that. The latest addition and a very fine tower and gateway. There's the tower, there's the gateway, bit of city wall. That's one side, sort of back with the stairs going up to the rampart level and then the opposite, the front, so to speak. What's interesting is it's on a kind of cross or L shape. There's the plan. So you can see Rampart coming in here, going up there, running across, but then another one running out that way. All very interesting. These are all based on real uh, buildings with tweaks to suit model railways and models in general. Um, I think I've seen a photograph of this one. I'll have to look that up. This is a photograph of the real thing off Wiki Commons, and it's by uh, Jose Luis Bernardo Ribeiro. Well done, mate. Thank you for that. They do a great job of the packing and um, presentation. It always looks fantastic. But I have to say, I'm not a fan of this kind of box. It's far less adaptable. You can't use it for other things so easily. Here we are with a bit of an unboxing going on. Big bits of plastic, huge sections of sprue. Very, very thick, very dense plastic. Bit of tissue paper. Oh, look, roof in a different colour, different coloured plastics. And there's some sizeable chunks of wall. It's quite enjoyable, that. And some brown plastic, which means it's woodwork. How about that? And then some bits in the corner of the box. I don't know what those little sticky discs are. And a mini, ca mini catalogue. But let's just have a look at the very clear instructions. Sides of walls, doors are added in, all of that kind of thing. So there we are. And let's do this. So you can see that's a section. There's a, an opening for a door. Oops, there's the little door. And then this is made up of two sides. All very nice. Also, I've done the tower. Now what is interesting is that I'm supposed to cut the top section off across there because this is based on a real tower. But I'm not going to because I like the idea of it being that tall. It's a very straightforward, quite grim tower in some respects. The top gets a bit ornate. So I'm going to keep it tall. But once again, interesting how all this works. You can see there's a patch there, which is where that fits in approximately and all of this really can be done in sections which is very fun to do so bit by bit all of these pieces can be removed or added this yep. is going to go higher up on the tower um, and to do that you have to attach it to this bit and I bet this won't oh look at that and so that bit comes off I've done super heavy handed weathering because I'm going to do a lot of dry brushing over the top so what I want to do is just create a kind of shadow if that and um, then I'm going to what I really want is a kind of dark grey blue underneath any overhangs um, and that might be all I've got to say at this point <laughs> worth saying is a lovely colour has come out very thin uh, and very matte and it is mahogany number 36 sample pot by I've probably gone around that haven't I by Farrow and Ball uh, which bizarrely is good for masonry why not eh the tower on its side. I've been doing, not really highlighting, just um, applying a paler layer of paint to lighten up the stonework a little. But to keep so a degree of the weathering, I've been painting in the opposite direction to that which I have applied the dark. So the dark paint has been brushed down, whoops, downwards. 
So I am now going to brush upwards. Let's see if we can get this on the camera. Obviously not very good because I'm leaning over the camera, as you can see, but you get the gist of it, I'm sure. And that way you counterbalance the, any noticeable brush strokes that are going downwards. You might be able to see one of the horrors that's occurred. These are both farrow and ball paints and I think the oil in the pale paint is bringing the darker paint back to life. So sometimes I get a weird chocolatey shade but that will be dealt with later on. Anyway, the principle is that we get this uh, sort of counterbalancing and where it's gone okay you can see that you still get a bit of darkness underneath right the basic paint job done time to get it out in the daylight and actually see what it looks like and some weathering but not all obviously um, and it's okay in my humble opinion I think this model is a bit of a masterpiece nothing to do with me though <laughs> I have to say I'm probably um, bringing it down a peg or two but anyway once you get it outside um, you can see that it's working indoors always gloomy I've got all kinds of light bulbs and daylight bulbs and everything but there's nothing quite like getting it outside and look at that blue sky don't see that very often these days so things are going okay I think we can relax a little I'd like to go to the real tower I think this is pretty much the paint job taken as far as it can go at the moment I'll need to put on all the other parts and then start drawing everything together in particular kind of did that wrong really didn't I in particular down here lots of woodwork going from the stairs up to that level and then there and then crossing over the back as well uh, so there's no point in going any further because I just do irrelevant stuff uh, and I, I mean, it, blah, 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 it's great. What I want is for the whole thing to look absolutely worn out and battered. So I haven't been too wonderful about getting the surface um, completely covered, nor about getting the lines completely straight and that kind of thing. Because not only have these had a bit of weathering in their own right, but they're going to get the final weathering when everything's put together. So here and there, lines are not quite running perfectly um, in keeping with ones above and below because I think a lot of it is going to disappear. That's my theory. This is all the wood panelling slowly coming together. Um, it's been very enjoyable to do but just here and there a couple of little bits aren't quite there. You can see aren't quite matching up which is a bit of a shame. Um, the paintwork's working for me at the moment but I will dull it down a bit uh, and you can see that it's quite a complex little system and there's a nice little view into some of the staircase. Lots of glue because everything wants to kind of wander um, I'll get that plank back up. Just thought it's worth showing there's a nice little loft there. I kind of feel like putting something in and sealing it in would <laughs> be pointless well as usual it's been a lovely day and I step outside the sun goes and the wind gets up so hopefully you get some idea of what this looks like so I've run back indoors to record some words basically this is it finished um, and it was great that ladies and gentlemen is what's called visual effects so yep yeah, this is it done um, I'm very pleased with it it on the whole it all went together really well uh, enjoyed making it very much enjoyed painting it and weathering it and it's almost come out the way I intended which is a good thing um, and yeah this is going to be part of something bigger 
Um, but that's kind of more of a promise than anything else. We'll see how it goes. It was a very windy day when I shot these. Um, so I will leave you with a little montage, big word there, and the sound of the wind blowing. Not exactly romantic and wonderful, but... You know. We're going to have to go on holiday to Rothenburg. You know, they've got some great buildings there. That sound is the wind blowing through the tight wire fence. That's the kind of day it is today.